looking to showcase ways in which farmers can increase the carbon in their soils. And remembering that most of that surplus carbon was originally in soil, but it's been removed through disturbance, and it is now more in our atmosphere and from the atmosphere into our oceans. And this is one of the main problems we've got with the acceleration of global warming, is the fact that our changing the position of where the carbon is stored. If we can get it back into our soils, we get a, a triple advantage. We take it out of the atmosphere, so we reduce the, the load in the, in the uh, air. We put it in the soils, which will stimulate both the, uh, the microbes and the fungi to give us more fertile soils, more fertile root growth of the plants that we grow. Our water is bonded to carbon. For every 1% carbon that we can add to our soils, we will store 175,000 litres per hectare of water bonded to the carbon. Not, not freely moving in, in, the, uh, in the profile. So those three reasons alone are, are worthy of, of our attention and to showcase how we can do that and encourage farmers to consider it in their systems. The Carbon Farm is a community component of the Living Classroom which is managed independently by a community board and it's 100 hectares of, of land that we've set aside to showcase a number of regenerative processes, including those focused on carbon capture and storage in soil and in plants. And the three main elements are to increase the amount of carbon in the soil from what at the moment our measurements tell us is about 1 to 2 percent. We think that traditionally these lands probably supported 4 or 5 percent, so we can store more carbon. We can create a, a more uh, carbon enriched environment, both in the microbiota and the, uh, uh, and the fungi activity. We can get a more diverse and more productive pasture uh, regime from it, in which case we would get healthier and, uh, and, and better animals will graze that. And we also want to be able to capture more water. So we want to be able to store more water in the soil profile where it's less likely to evaporate and more likely to infiltrate into the groundwater. We've established within the carbon farm the collaborator farmers, uh, 22 of them, and we have discussed, met and had some of them uh, visit here and uh, look at various aspects that they can apply to their farms and how they will communicate that to us. Our aspiration is that we build on that so their storytelling becomes part of our storytelling and we showcase what they're doing. And eventually, I think, using the IT and building into those STEM components, we want to be able to link it through the cloud so that we can put measuring devices and we can compare even day to day how the uh, aspect of their approach to carbon capture, for example, is mirrored in what we are doing here. From the point of view of the farming activity, we need to encourage farmers to look at those ways and means of increasing their soil carbon. Put your plants uh, residues back into your soil. Uh, crimp your stems of a, of a harvested crop so that the fungi and the algae can attack it more readily and convert it more quickly back into soil. Uh, don't leave your soils bare and fallow, especially in summer, where we know that the surface temperature is going to be over 60 degrees. Maintain a ground cover as much as you can, interplant and intercrop. Uh, don't look at monocultures, look at how you can combine those. Create woodlots and wood belts to try and control the movement of uh, insect eating birds, uh, re reduce the amount of wind which reduces evaporation. All of those methods are possibly farmers options. Then you've got the reward to the farmer for the capturing of carbon. So just looking at the ways in which the carbon farming works, the farmer is required to make a commitment to the process. There is a requirement for a baselining of the property. So how much carbon do you have on your property to start with? And that may vary between paddock to paddock across the farm. How is that then equated to a, a farm total figure, a starting point? How is the farmer then going to plan and manage for the carbon capture? What system is he going to use, is she going to use to increase that carbon? How is it measured progressively? How do they then submit that, um, that application for what they have achieved? How are they going to be remunerated for their achievement? All of those things require commitment, measurement, science, um, accuracy. When we look at climate change and we accept that the climate has been changing, over millennia. We also have to accept that the records show that the accelerated change can only be associated with human activity. So even if we were trending towards a warmer climate, we have accelerated by what we are doing on the earth. 
who can save the day? The answer is farmers. If farmers are more aware of the importance of the carbon and the ways and means available to them, then I think they're far more likely to adopt that as being part of the process going forward. And they'll need to have a few skills that uh, they perhaps don't have now in order to be able to do it well.